Hello everyone, welcome to another video. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you are old here, welcome back to another video. I am Dennis Joshua and in this video, I am going to show you how to design this nice church flyer with pictures like this. And this is coming up. Subscribe and click on the bell so you won't miss any video. So these are the resources I'll be using for this video, for this tutorial. These are the pictures, the background, and I have also carefully typed the write-ups and arranged it the way I want on the flyer because I don't want to waste our time on the flyer. I have to go straight to the point where I need to show you, where you need to learn from. I have to take time and work on that. But as for the less important element, I have already arranged it already so let's go into the main design so I'm going to set my size to uh, a5 since I'm designing a flyer that will be for uh, print so I have to set my size to a5 just as you can see and I'm going to create a shape by clicking on rectangle to double clicking on rectangle tool to get the shape just like this then I'll give it, uh, I'll click here to take off the outline, right click here to take off the outline of this shape because I don't like working with outline, that's why I always right click there to take off every outline of my shape because I don't like working with outline, I like my design to be plain and perfect. So I'll give it a um, uh, magenta color, this is the color I'll be working with and I'm going to fill it with black okay that's nice then I'm going to click on a elliptical fountain fill so I get this type of feel like this but I don't want the black to be at the center I want the magenta to be at the center so I'm going to click here where you have reverse fill to reverse the fill like this and then I can adjust again till I get this type of fill like this you can see it looks very cool then I'm going to power clip my background inside the shape so I'm going to right click and select power clip inside and click on the shape to bring this background here if you observe I've already transparent the down part of this background so there is no much work to be done on the background I'm going to press alternate on my keyboard to select the content inside the power clip and take it upwards like this this is very perfect then I'm going to click on transparency tool and click on uniform transparency to transparent this inside the shape like this then I'm going to adjust my transparency till it fits the exact feel I want in this design okay I think this is better for me okay and this is the type of view I want in this design and I'm going to fix my logo first I'm going to place my logo here and I'm going to bring this other type here which I've already typed already remember when designing flyer make sure all your uh, design all your text objects your elements are always inside now let me show you one secret I have to guard this job so after print when the design is about to be taken to the guillotine they won't cut off my text now i see most graphic designers that design and you see their text very close to the edge of the design which is not right at all you have to give your design a cut line and lead so your design your job will be guarded so i'm going to guard this flyer so i won't make any mistake it's not right for you to cut off your text but it won't be so bad if your picture is cut off as far as the main part of the picture is not cut off so i'm going to guard this job at least you should use your ruler to guard the job at least uh 0.5 inch away from the edge that's half inch away from the
edge of the design okay all right this looks perfect you can see i've used my ruler to guide this job like this so none of my text will go outside this place now you can see the box here everything i'm going to do inside this design will be inside that space i have for all my elements so nothing will leave that line so i'm going to guard myself with that okay i'm going to adjust this all right that is perfect and the next thing i'm going to do is to create a, a box where i have to fix all these pictures first because i want all the pictures to appear at the top of the flyer so this is what i'm going to do for all this which means i need to create these are six pictures here apart from the main picture which according to the brief was that the main picture should stand alone so all these people here will be on the box stand the type of box i'm going to create is going to be this special effect and i see most designers use this on their flyer design and lots of people always tell me how do you do this type of effect how do you do this type of design and i'm going to apply it on this flyer so you can learn how to do this okay so i'm going to click on uh, my ellipse tool and press control on your keyboard then create this shape like this okay that's a circle shape then i'm going to give it a yellow color and i'm going to use deep yellow for most of it i've been following up my tutorial for some time now you know very well i like using deep yellow instead of the main yellow color so that's what i'm going to use on this design i'm going to right click here to take off the outline then this is what i'm going to do i'm going to duplicate this shape like this press ctrl drag it so it remains on a straight line you know when you press ctrl the shape remains on a straight line but if i leave the control it moves to any direction but pressing control will help me to remain on a straight line then i'm going to right click before i leave so i can get the two shapes like this and what i'm going to do on the second shape is i'm going to click on my rectangle tool and take it to this edge where you see uh you see that notification that is written the quadrant you see quadrant okay and if you take it to this other side also you also see quadrant so i'm going to make sure i am at that point that shows that notification quadrant and i'm going to click there sorry i'm going to click there to create the shape and make sure you get to this other edge that also says quadrant okay now you know you are on a straight line now you know take it upwards a little and leave once you get to that point you know you are on a straight line that is you have been able to join the two quadrants together and you are on a straight line then click here and take it upwards take it upwards and that's very nice so what i'm going to do next is to weld these two shapes together i'm going to weld the rectangle shape and the circle shape together then i'm going to click on weld after selecting both of them you click on weld then you have this shape like this now if you check there is a little curve here which means it's not straight so i'm going to delete that curve away by selecting them with my shape tool so um, i'm going to select one of these nodes with my shape tool this is the shape tool here and i'm going to double click on it so i can delete now you can see it's very straight then the next thing i'm going to do is to click now we are not right click i want to take off that few because i want this shape to be like a shadow I don't want it to appear visibly i want it to be like a shadow so i'm going to click here now you can see it as if nothing is there but if you click there you know that there is a shape here now let me show you that's the shape i added an outline and that's the shape so i'm going to take off the outline so this shape has no view no outline so no one can see the shape except you click on that particular place where the shape is located then what I'm going to do now is to press shift on my keyboard and select 
this other circle and press C. Now let me show you. Okay. Click again to take off the fill. So now the circle is behind this invisible shape. So I can always power clip my pictures inside this invisible shape and it will give me a nice effect. I know many may not understand what I'm trying to do, but when I start using it, you will understand. Then if you find it difficult to create this shape, keep on watching that particular part where I made this shape again and again and again and you will understand it. Thank you so much for your understanding. Okay, then I'm going to select all and reduce it. I need five, sorry, six of this shape. So I'm going to do it like this, duplicate it too. Now, let me show you one secret I use in duplicating now. As I've grouped the two shapes, but I've not, I just select the two shapes. I've not grouped it yet. Grouping it means I have to press Ctrl G, but I don't want to group it because I want to work with the shapes differently. So I'm going to press Ctrl on, on my keyboard and click and drag then right click before you leave then after that i can press ctrl d once you do the first effect the remaining shapes will follow that same pattern so you just have to press ctrl d to duplicate it up to it up to six like this then you group all of them remember you are grouping both the visible shape and the invisible shape press ctrl g this time around press shift on your keyboard and select the shape we are working with and press C. So you can see now it's very perfect like this. You can now you can see how the invisible shape is. You leave it. Then click on on group all objects here so you can ungroup everything. Then I will start power clipping all my pictures and setting them very well, just like this. A power clip here. Now note this power clip is done on the invisible shape not the visible shape okay so this is it you can see how it looks like after adjusting it okay I'll do the same to this other one Just have to take your time so you make sure your job is perfect okay okay and I'll do the same to this other one here I am this picture is short so I'm going to fill this down part I have to open this power clip then fill it with uh, black on the page down okay let me use my color eye drop to pick the color closer to her and fill here so it can fill that space you can see it looks cool now not really visible again I'm going to continue my power clip I want it to be here. Why I'm adjusting it because I want all the pictures to be at the same height. So I have to put uh, it that place. Okay, it's okay now. Then I'll do the same to this other one. Right, it's perfect. And same to this. Okay, this is perfect. And lastly, this. this is also perfect all right now what I want us to understand is that you can always edit the shape behind this you can always edit the shape behind it at any to anything you want okay let me select the shape behind it okay and drag it upwards it still looks cool 
okay so you can always edit that but for now i believe you understand how to do that stuff i still have to adjust these picks again so they fit what i really want okay believe this is perfect for now okay now I'm going to group all press ctrl G press C on my keyboard select the shape and press C so it can centralize everything here so now I'm gradually progressing in this design all right now the next thing I'm going to do is to type in my focal point I always make emphasis on focal points Whenever you are designing a flyer, your focal point is the most important part of that flyer. That is where the beauty of the flyer comes out from and that is the most important element in your design. And this brings the rule of a visual hierarchy. The arrangement of elements from the most important element to the less important element. Now, your focal point is that element you want to catch someone's attention at a glance that is once someone collects or once anyone collects this flyer the first element you want them to see is your focal point so you have to make sure your focal point is very nice and enticing so let's create the focal point now and that is the theme for this particular flyer swimming in the supernatural all right so this is the theme for this particular flyer i'm going to press ctrl k to break the text and press ctrl k again then i'm going to use futura yeah futura that is the typeface that we're using. Then I'm going to choose on uh, Futura Bold. Make it bold. All right, this is cool. Then I'll use my shape tool to adjust the tracking. All right, this is cool. Then I'm going to join these other texts together like this. And I'll give it Futura Bold also. Okay, and this other typeface will be Bleeding Cowboys. So that is the name of this typeface. I'm going to press change case to title case. Okay, so this is the typeface Bleeding Cowboy. Then I'm going to make something very creative here. Okay position swimming there then I will use my pen to to cut this out like this you can see where this uh, tail of this text passes so I'm going to make sure that I cut out that space I want the tail to pass through the swimming so it looks very nice i want to create a special effect there so i'm going to click here and just keep on clicking and follow up where the tail passes like this keep on clicking so i'm going to speed up this process keep on clicking till you get here all right then pass through this other side again and continue clicking like this keep on clicking till you cut out to this other side also and this is very fine so now I've been able to create that shape that passes through the swimming so I'm going to trim that swimming so I'll click on the shape first, press shift on my keyboard and select swimming. 
then you click on trim and delete off the shape so you can see that nice effect there that makes the swimming and the supernatural to blend and that tail passes through swimming it looks so cool okay the next thing i'm going to do here is to create a shape like this and i'm going to give it a yellow color that is the deep yellow while in there will be on top okay then i think i should give it a magenta color like that okay then i'm going to type in this text um Okay. I'll make it bold and reduce it like this. Now this has two texts, so I'm going to make sure that I represent the two texts. Sam sixty-three. okay this looks so cool then i'm going to give this a yellow color also and transparent using my interactive field tool sorry i'm going to create this nice feel here like that that is very perfect and this other swimming will be white Let's give it a white color then these two should be white as well then you can see i've created something very nice there then i'm going to group this and enlarge it a little enlarge it so the next effect i'm going to show you and i'll be using it on this swimming in the supernatural is going to be is called is called uh, the perspective effect click on object and click on add perspective okay click on object and click on add perspective then you can see this stuff it says object to complex exceeds 64k bytes but it does not mean it still works okay then i'm going to adjust like this Still popping up but I don't know but it still works okay it's simply because of the text is too much but I still have to force it on it till it works so well okay this is very cool that is the effect I needed I needed the text to look as if it's actually working out of that particular background you see it looks so cool let me know down in the comments if you love this perspective effect okay um i'm okay with this all right then i'm going to add shadows to this particular effect click on your shadow tool and click and drag down to drop the shadow then adjust the shadows like this adjust the faders it looks cool right and very nice so that's actually what i wanted here i'm going to take this up a little all right then the next thing i'm going to do let me bring these other elements closer so i can fix them Immediately. I'm going to place this picture here at the left like this I've already transferred the two sides of the picture so it fits into the background so well all right then I'll bring this name here uh, 
perfect then this will be here I'm going to reduce this to fit it so well okay remember I had to take my time to arrange this before starting this tutorial because I don't want to waste your time typing all this stuff and arranging all this stuff my main focus is for you to learn how to create your focal point and to make these pictures like this so I believe you have learned already I'm just trying to summarize the whole tutorial I'm going to reduce this and remember I'm still working with my guidelines so everything I do is inside my guidelines All this text comes in here. I believe this is okay. Alright. Okay, so this is a final look of this flyer design. Alright, so this is what I've come up with. And let me know down in the comments if you learned something new from this tutorial. And if you love this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. So thank you so much for watching this video and kindly check us. I have more tutorials on flyer design, especially church flyer design. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next time.